Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Scott. I'm Maddie. For math, for math homework help, call in Bakersfield 636-4357. Everywhere else in 1-866-636-6284. Email do the math at kern.org. We're online at do the math net. And on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, nicely done. Thank you for taking care of that, Addy. It's a little bit of problem when Scott or I have to do it, so we <laughs> get the professional to do it today. So, how is school? Um, pretty good. Now, um, you are a homeschool student in eighth grade right now, right? Yes. And how is eighth grade? Um, pretty good. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go to an outside schooling program, and... Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. So how do you like that, going to the outside schooling program? Um, I feel like it gives uh, a lot of homeschoolers um, some interaction with people um, instead of just being at home all the time. So how many people are you with when you go on Tuesday and Thursday? Um, there's about 400 people there. So you interact with all 400 people. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. so, is it, so it's obviously not just eighth graders, so it's students of all different ages are yes. all together. Yeah. And you guys get to interact for those couple of days. And is it like the regular school day you're there, or is it just a shorter time? It's about five hours. Okay. So it's about the same time as a regular school day. Yeah. Is there anything, because you're going to go to high school next year, so what is the thing you're most anticipating about high school? Um, for high school, I'm going to go to North High, so uh, I'm really excited to do cheer. Oh, good. So you'll be a star. Yeah. And you already are a star because you're on Do The Math today, right? Yeah. Okay, good. You ready to help me out with the problem? I'm ready. Here we go. Today's social media problem, let's look at it together. And uh, which expression can be used to find 95% of 280? So, Addie, when you look at that, what is the first thing you're thinking of, first of all? Um... The first thing I'm thinking of is 95% is usually like almost 100%. So okay. the first thing I think of is... Um, so we don't want to solve it. We just want to know how can we write that out, 95% of 280. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Really, you to write it out, you have probably have to find, uh, first of all, 5% of 280. You probably have to find like the little... The little 5%. Okay, so what I think you're doing is you're still trying to figure out what that number would be. But let's just yeah. think about 95%. What are some ways we could write 95% first of all? Um, let's take a look at A. Can we put 95 over 100? Does that mean 95%? Yes. Okay, because if you got 95 out of 100, you got a 95%. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at B. 0 0.95, that means 95 hundredths. 95 hundredths, yeah. That would be 95% too, wouldn't it? Yes. All right, let's take a look at C. 9.5 over 10. What do you think about that? Um, that's the same thing. It's just moving the decimal place. Right. All right, so very nice seeing that. So now we need to see the word of. Do you know what the word of means in mathematics most often? Um, it usually means um, the, the full amount or what? the equals of it. Could be. So we want, if I want 3 of 4, right? Mm-hmm. I want not all of it. Here I want 95% of 280. So we're going to multiply Fraction. when we see the word of. Yeah. Do all of them multiply? Yes. Okay, so A, B, and C, you agreed that all of them said 95%. Yes. You agree that all of them have a multiplication operation. Yeah. And do they all have 280 as what we're looking for with the other number? Yes. All right, so do you want to go with A, B, C, or D? I think they're all correct. 
All right. Now, you know, sometimes we put that up there to kind of trick kids and fool them and stuff like that. <laughs> do you really want to go with that or do you, are you feeling good? I'm feeling good about You're it. You're feeling good. All right. Let's take a look and see if D is indeed correct. D is correct. <laughs> there you go, Addy. One for one. Nice going. Ding, ding, ding. You're like, I feel pretty good about that. Don't try to trick me, old man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what kinds of things are you doing in your math right now in eighth grade? Um, right now I'm doing pre-algebra, and uh, today I actually was pra uh, practicing algebraic equations. Okay. And before that you do expressions, which is what we just did right there with an expression, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're going to get to some of those in a little bit, all right? All right. But first, we're going to take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, today's Math in the News. This is uh, something hot in the news right now, the Blue Zones, right? Sure is. So right now we've got Jonathan and Vachika with us. And you guys are with the Blue Zones Project. That is correct. And first of all, Jonathan, tell us first, what is the Blue Zones Project? <clears throat> so the Blue Zones Project is an initiative that started with uh, Dan Butner himself. He's a National Geographic explorer, and he was out on a 20-year longevity study trying to find the world's healthiest people. So he concluded with five original Blue Zones. So those Blue Zones are located across the world. So we have one here very close to us in the San Bernardino County. Yeah, let's take a look. I mean, because we've got them right here. Let's start at the top. Because these look like all beautiful places to yes. live too, right? Yes. I mean, so we've got uh, in Greece. Yeah, we have uh, our first ones in Icaria, Greece. Our second ones in uh, Sardinia, Italy. We have one in uh, Nicoya, Costa Rica. And then uh, we go to Okinawa, Japan, and then we go to Loma Linda, California. So we've got them right now, basically in our backyard. Yes, we do, just down south. Pretty close. So continue with, uh, other than these places. So else? these blue zones, um, it's a funny story. So they're blue zones because Dan Buechner had a blue pen when he was out on his expedition. So he decided to circle those with the blue pen. So that's pen. why it's called blue and zones. And that's why it's called blue zones, okay. right? We uh, I always joke about us probably being the pink zones had he had a pink <laughs> pen, right? But um, so these blue zones, um, it's where people um, live the happiest, longest lives. So it's, uh, it's more common to have centenarians in these five original blue zones than it is here in the United States. And it's funny you bring that up because I was watching a TV show and it, before we even knew that when you were coming on, it was a while ago, and I'm watching this thing, and they were talking about the people that live in Japan. Yes. And centenarians, right? Yes, centenarians. And they do not drive no. as much as other people that do, right? Because true. of them walking, yes. that is helping to their longevity also. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's um, in his study, he came up with five, uh, nine commonalities, which he decided to call the power nine. The first one being moving naturally. So what these people in these five original blue zones were doing was moving naturally, and it's in that, in that exact same sense that you're talking about, right? So they were walking. They were walking to school. They were walking to the grocery store. They were walking to their friend's house, right? So it's, it's exactly what we don't do here in the United States, which is what we're trying to bring here into the city of Bakersfield. Okay, and well, I mean, because when I was growing up, being an old man, and when I wanted to go someplace, my parents were like, well, if you want to go somewhere, walk, <laughs> right? So right. we would walk, I mean, for miles to get where we wanted to go, and if we were lucky enough that a bike we could get even farther but right. there was no like oh yeah I'll give you a ride or right. you're not getting a car you know things like that so I think that moving naturally is a, a one that people probably don't think of as often but it's right. probably very important very very important and one of the things that we like to say is that we're not the fun police right we're not trying to take the fun away from anybody we're not trying to sign people up to gym memberships we're not trying to get them to run marathons we're not trying right. to get you them to run miles yes it's just it's something simple that whenever you go to the grocery store let's not park in that first aisle let's park in that last aisle right mm -hmm. let's get those steps in. let's make sure that we're reaching our our, our steps in on a daily basis that's yeah. all, that's what it's all about that yeah, doesn't have to be anything drastic exactly right, yeah. all right so i know that you guys brought a uh so we want to see what is going to make a dish sure. healthy and blue zone certified. Yes. Yeah. So the, the easiest way that I can describe it is, is that most of the dish should be plant based. So it'll be plant based. The items can't be fried. So uh, some items that we have um, are, are mostly just, you know, vegetables or sandwiches, whole grain, things like that. And also they can use some cheese, so they can use uh, goat's milk and sheep's milk cheese. But other than that, um, no other dairy products. And that kind of wraps up what can be a Blue Zones inspired dish. And the reason why we use sheep's and goat's milk is because that's what they use in some of the original Blue Zones. Okay. And we can see that one of the items here is from Radio Sandwich. Mm -hmm. And we love Radio Sandwich and we love Miriam and she's a great friend of the show and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the sandwiches that they have mm -hmm. and we take a look at the items here. So what on here helps with them? 
Definitely. So everything that's on there, for example, the, the sourdough, um, the tomatoes, everything that she incorporates in the sandwich encompasses everything that we promote with Inspired Dishes. So healthier items, things like that, that, that um, can really make a difference in the way that we eat and the way that we view food. Because um, some of the things that, that we like to promote aren't necessarily salads. So a lot of people think healthy items are salads, things like that that are traditional, right? And we want people to imagine healthy foods in different ways. And Miriam does a great job at that. Because I was going to say, because that's probably the first thing people think of is like, well, I just have to eat salads all the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's like, well, you <laughs> can have a nice fun. sandwich right there and mm -hmm. radio sandwich right, you know, right here in downtown Bakersfield. So let's take a look at the video of the uh, Blue Zones right here. So we've got Sequoia. So, uh, so that we just approved, the, uh, they were actually our very first approved restaurant. And then we also have Modern, Modern Grub. Grub. Uh, and they do quite an amazing job. They have a full menu of Blue Zones dishes, and so does Miriam. Miriam has uh, three Blue Zones dishes that she does regularly, um, but they're based on when um, the season changes. And then we have um, Sequoia sandwiches that has the hot and cold veggie sandwiches that are Blue Zones inspired as well. And then this is my favorite. So we have our smoothie bike. So aside from working in restaurants, <laughs> we're also in schools. We're also in work sites. We're also in restaurants. And one of my favorite initiatives is bringing out those smoothie bikes into our schools, right? So letting the students being able to hop on their smoothie and make themselves a plant-based smoothie. So whenever I talk to you and I ask you, hey, what do you think about a plant-based smoothie? What, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The taste. Okay, so, <laughs> and so um, when we get that a lot, right, with a lot of my students, I always say, hey, whenever we're going to have a plant-based smoothie, what's the first thing you think about? And they always think about the spinach, they think about the kale, they think about carrots, right? And it's like, it's not necessarily that. Fruits are also plants, right? right? So we do strawberries, we do berries, we do orange juice sweetness space. To yes, absolutely. So um, it's incorporating that those Blue Zones concepts, right, while also getting on the bike and being able to move naturally. And so um, part of the Blue Zones project uh, goals is to help uh, schools become Blue Zones project approved as well. So as a, a restaurants or works that's in our grocery stores. So at the end of the day, it's that um, community-wide approach, right? So where we're focusing on um, our students getting to school and implementing those healthier habits at school. And then from there, being able to go to the restaurant and then being able to go to the community park and then being able, their parents also being at the work site, making sure that they're following these nine principles. And nine I'm sure principles. that at restaurants, they probably highlight these items they have mm -hmm. that are Blue Zone certified. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely. So are there restaurants, because I know you talked about the three restaurants here in town. Sure. Is there, are there any that they predominantly like, you're like, wow, they have a, a lot of them. Yeah. Because I know it's hard to get certified for these. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. So uh, Mango House actually has 11 uh, Blue Zones inspired dishes. So for all of the, the meat entrees that they have, they have uh, as well uh, a plant-based version. So they even have a plant-based steak. So Mango House is across the street from Bill Library. Okay. And they just opened about a few months ago and they're amazing. Normal. And everything seems like it's right here in downtown Bakersfield, right? Definitely, because that's yeah. across from the Beal, mm -hmm. right? Sequoia's right, right here. Mm -hmm. Radio is here. Radio's here. And then Modern Grub is on, I believe like Northwest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a relatively new one, isn't it? Yes. Modern well, Grub? Uh, Modern Grub, I think they've been open for maybe like five years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So radio is even newer than that one then. Yes. Okay. Well, great. So let's talk about the final thing here. So you want everybody getting into a habit, especially talking about going to the schools and things like mm -hmm. that. When they're at a grocery store, is there a way for you guys to implement what you're trying to do in a grocery store, even in a small part of it? Yeah, so some of the things that restaurants do are small nudges towards making sure that people make the, the healthy choice. So little things like the salt on the tables, we take them off and actually put them behind the counter. So it makes it harder for people to take the Just salt. Just grab it out of the hat. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. put it on their food. And same thing with uh, our grocery stores is we make a, a healthy checkout lane. So instead of the candy being accessible, right. um, there's fruits and veg well, not vegetables, depending on, on like uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the way it's, mode, right. Yeah. So like, um, like granola, bars things like that that are healthier that you can grab when you're checking out instead of being tempted by the chips and the, the beef jerky things yeah, like that. Yeah, because all that stuff is an impulse buy. You're standing Absolutely. there waiting and it's like, oh, it looks pretty good. Let me have one of those, right? Yeah. And a kid is always going to be like, hey, can I get something real quick? And they just grab whatever because they want to grab something. And, yeah. Exactly. You know. now, um, also in our grocery stores, one of the things that we want to do is whenever you're walking down the aisle is to be able to identify Blue Zones um, food items, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll, you'll have that sticker labeled and then instead of having to go to the food facts, to the nutrition facts, on you already know you it's already certified, know. And, it's ready certified and ready to that go. That's good. Yeah, because I know there's a lot of people now, they look at the labels mm -hmm. a little more closely, yes. um, but that takes all the guesswork out of it. Mm -hmm. 
you know it's going to be healthy and it's good for you and uh, help you live, live in your own blue zone. Kind yep, of, right? that's exactly right. It's going to help us get to 100 years old. Hey, you can all certainly hope so, right? <laughs> anyway, Chica, Jonathan, thank you for coming in today. Thank you very much for having us. A lot of great us. information, and uh, perhaps you guys roll it around sometime, bring some Blue Zone food in. We'll help we you all right here. Yeah, we will. Yes, we will. Thank all you so right, much. Cool. And when you go to Radio Sandwich again, say hi to Miriam for us. <laughs> we'll right? do. All right. That is today's Math in the News. Five thirty. And in studio with us, we have eighth grader Addie, and Addie is working on expressions and equations, and we're going to get her busy with one right now. You ready? I'm ready. Do you uh, think you would like to eat Blue Zone kind of like that? Or do you already? You might even, you might be like, hey, I'm already on that. <laughs> um, uh, probably. You I ever probably... had a veggie, a pure veggie sandwich with no meat on it at all? Probably not, uh, actually. Okay. Oh, there you go. So well, maybe we'll we can close, try not quite there. there. <laughs> all right, so you're ready? We're going to do an expression before an equation. Okay. All right? So in parentheses, so go ahead and open up a set of parentheses. So we're going to go, since you're Addy, let's go 9A <laughs> plus 4, close parentheses, minus, open parentheses, negative 6A minus 9, close parentheses, Evaluate and simplify that expression. Whoa. Okay. okay, tell me what you're thinking here, Addie. What do you want to do? Um, the first thing is when you're trying to evaluate when you're trying to evaluate an equation, you usually find the alike numbers. Okay, so we want to put things together that are alike, right? Yes. And we can't do that until the parentheses are gone. Yes. So how do you make the first set of parentheses go away? Um, usually you, um, well, you look at this and then you, um, with these parentheses at least, you would uh, use the distributive property. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I like how you just said that. So what about on the first one? Does the first one have the option of using the distributive property? No. What is the number that goes out here in front of the parentheses? If you um, don't see it, what's supposed to go there? A plus sign, maybe? There you go, definitely, I like that a lot. What about a number? Do you have a number that could go there? One. One, yeah, that's it. If you don't see it, there's a positive one out front. And so you could use the distributed property here. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And it would make the parentheses go away. Go ahead and do that real quick. See what you get. So what's one times nine A? Nine A. Nine A. And what's one times positive four? So all that happened here was there was no sign to worry about. There's no negative and there was no number to worry about. So we just took those parentheses off. But really what's happening behind the scenes that we don't talk about very often is you really are using the distributive property. Okay, tell me about the second one because that's going to be a lot different, right? Uh, so because you already have a minus sign here, it would be a minus one. There you go. So if you don't see it, there's a one. But this time it's a negative one. That's a lot different than a positive one. So what happens when you distribute that negative one? Um, well, first you go over to yeah. this number. Good. And um, because there is two negative symbols, it would change it into a positive number. Gotcha, all right. And you're just multiplying those things together, right? Negative one yeah. times negative six A. All right, what's next? And then uh, you go over to the next number, yeah. and this is also a negative number, so you switch it over again to a positive number. Which two numbers are you actually multiplying? Um, you're multiplying the negative one and the negative nine. That's right, gotcha. That's really what you're doing. Good job. Yeah. Okay, so what's the answer? What is negative one times negative nine? Positive nine, good. Now you can get back to what you said at the beginning. We want to put things together that look the same, right? That are together in groups and combine like terms. That's kind of what we say in math. Which things are going to combine? Uh, well, first I noticed that there are two numbers with A. Good. And the alike numbers, then you add them together. Good. So two terms with A. And sometimes I'll have my students actually underline those or put a box around them or a circle around them or something like that. What are you going to do with 9A and 6A? Um, because there is a plus sign here and not a negative sign, you're going to add them together. All right. Do it. 15 what? 15. 15A. A for Addy. That's it. Don't forget <laughs> that part. Okay. What about the other numbers? Um, the other numbers are, they don't have any letters, but they are alike terms because mm -hmm. neither of them have letters. That's so. it. So we can kind of 
show, even with a visual, those are going together, right? And the next ones are these two. I like to differentiate those. So you can kind of see what's going on there, right? So you're adding four and nine. You're going to put them together. And then um, Good job. that is 13. What do you think? Anything else to do? No, I think that's it. All right. So here's the big question of the day then. Why not? Because very, very often I will have students that say 15A plus 13 is 28A. Why can't you put those two things together? Because they are not alike terms. Why not? Because um, when you add things together that are alike terms, they go together and they have the same letter. There you go. But because this doesn't have a letter to put them together, it, they can't go together. Yeah, and if you wanted to make a real life example, this is kind of like 15 apples and $13, right? You can put all that stuff in a box and you can mix it up and you can jumble it around and you look in the box and you still have 15 apples and $13. Doesn't matter how you look at it, right? You cannot put those two things together because they really aren't the same. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like how you did that. Well done. Nicely done. And I'm glad that you didn't combine those and you explained it well with the, them not being like terms. So for your great effort so far today, Addy, you've got yourself a couple of passes to any CSUB sporting event of your choice. So congratulations on that. And thank you to CSUB Athletics. And uh, we had Kyle Condor, the director of athletics in a couple of weeks ago. And there are a lot of sports just starting up. And uh, is there a sport that you would like to go see more than another one, do you think? Um, I feel like I get entertained pretty easily by most sports. So. Right, well, I know that <laughs> volleyball is going on right now. Basketball will be starting up. So hopefully uh, you have an opportunity to go check out one of those. If not, it's good for the entire year. And you know what? We're going to be back with more right after this. Hey everybody, we're out here at Carlson Dentistry here with Dr. Dominic Carlson. Thanks for having us in today. No problem, Appreciate thanks for it. coming. So, a dentist. Mm -hmm. What goes into being a dentist when a patient walks through the door? What does that look like for you guys? Well, it kind of depends on the patient's needs. So, uh, the front desk goes through a patient interview on the phone. They're just coming in for a cleaning. We, we sit them down, we ask them about their medical history and go over all that ask them any needs or wants or needs that they need, and then we do a visual first. We, we usually look in their mouth briefly, and then that helps us determine what x-rays we need, um, either a full mouth or maybe just routine bite wings, which is the four x-rays you get every year, and that just shows us um, the cavities in your, in your back teeth first. So when you say full x-ray, I mean, we have some x-rays up here on the screen. So if the patient's sitting here in the chair and you want to do full x-rays, that includes all teeth, the entire mouth, and every surface of the tooth that you can see? Correct. So usually new patients that haven't been in in a few years, we take a full series of 16 x-rays. It shows us the cavities and also shows us the ends of your roots, which is what you can't see visually. So that shows us any... Um, we call it apical infections that we can't see um, internally when we're doing an exam or if they have some sort of perio disease also. So kind of going into the cleaning side, we also look at your gum health. So when we, when we have a patient in the chair, we do measurements of your tissue. Um, there's a little probe and it's all in millimeters. Healthy numbers range between one and three millimeters. Um, and that's usually a good sign that you're brushing and flossing pretty well at okay. home. So every tooth has six different spots that we test. So if I'm testing your back, this would be your back right first molar. I'm testing the back corner and the side and then also in the front corner. And then I'm also wrapping around the tooth and doing those same size on the tongue side. And so anything from one to three is healthy. Anything higher than that means there's some sort of attachment loss. And when you say higher, does that mean the instrument go, goes deeper into the gum? Correct. Okay. The instrument will go deeper into the gum, and those can range from 4 to you know 12, wow. depending on how severe it is. Okay. So what that means is there's clinical attachment loss of your tissue, which means there's infection around your teeth, and that's what causes your bone to recede. So then after the x-rays, um, and then you go in, and then I think they scrape the teeth, if I remember correctly. I remember sitting there and always feeling that, that mm -hmm. pressure of someone scraping. What are they scraping off, and then what do they do after that? Yeah. So everyone, no matter who you are, we, we develop plaque. Um, that's just from day-to-day -day function. 
And over time, that plaque calcifies, and we call that calculus. So everyone builds up calculus, and that's what the hygienists will go in, and they'll use hygiene scalers, and they'll scale that calculus off. Okay, and that's the different in, the different ends Correct. here that they use to different angles and everything like that. So does that depend on what tooth, what direction, what way they might have to scrape? Because I always, I always feel like I watch my hygienist go through three or four different tools, flipping it around, no, not that way, let me get the other way. Is it all based on angles and everything like that, mathematically, of how to get into those areas? Correct. So this is just one scaler that we have. Uh, this is a posterior scaler that I use. Okay. And so to scale properly, you need to turn it at an angle, okay? The, the purpose of that is to get the calculus off your teeth. But you need at least like a 60 degree angle, I would say, to properly scale the tooth. Crazy, then after that's done, they go into a, is it a whitening and like a brush? But they're not brushing. I mean, I, I don't have a high pressure brush at home. <laughs> that sounds like a vacuum is running <laughs> yeah, we, my teeth. We but. call it a profi. Profi cut, profi paste, okay. and that's what they polish your stain off. So that's the last my stage. Stain, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, does your everyone coffee. have stain, or the coffee stains, ketchup, all those stains everything. that would go into anything? Sodas, in my stain. monsters, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So really, everything. Well, when we come back, we'll look at uh, how to identify cavities and what goes into that. Perfect. Right, a little earlier we were speaking about the blue zones and how to uh, incorporate that into your diet. Right now we've got Aaron with Kern County Public Health. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, my pleasure. So we're going to tie the blue zones in with what we do right here in Kern County. Yes, absolutely. So what is your role with the county office? Uh, I'm the public health nutritionist, so I help create and manage all of our health nu and nutrition initiatives throughout the county, uh, one of which being Know Your Numbers, which I'd like to talk a little bit about today. All right. Do you know your numbers? Uh, I do. Yes. Okay, I was going to say, it's good. you better know your numbers. Are yeah. you telling me to know my numbers? I that do. Mean, you better know your numbers. I know. Numbers. i got to practice what I preach, right? <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at what people will be presented with when they first go in. So let's say I was going to go in, and I go, hey, Aaron, I want you to help me out, and you know, I'm just looking for a better, healthier lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to look at my weight, BMI for students. So what does BMI stand for? Uh, body Mass Index. Okay, and is there a way to calculate that? Uh, there what is, are you looking for? Yeah, it's basically a height to weight ratio. Um, it's not always completely accurate with certain types of bodies, uh, usually those with bodybuilders or people with larger amounts of muscle mass. It can be a bit skewed to say that they're obese when they aren't necessarily. Right, because they could be shorter. Yes, because it's a but yeah, well height to weight built ratio. And that's and, what they're... Yes, absolutely. So it doesn't work for everyone, but it's a great parameter to use for the average American. Okay, blood pressure. So let's say we're going to have, uh, let's say we have a 30 year old person going in. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's pretty much the same for everybody, but what would be an ideal blood pressure for somebody that... And a, a we'd, regular, want to see, uh, we'd want to see something around 120 over 80, not much higher on either end of the systolic or diastolic there. Okay, so. and what about if it was lower? Because we always talk about high blood pressure, but there is a thing you, about low blood low, pressure. If it's too low, you can also. also get some dizziness, nausea-like symptoms as well. So it's important to keep it within a range um, slightly lower than 120 over 80, but we really don't want it to get too low either. We don't want it to get uh, into the 90s over uh, 60 or below yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you're going to get in dicey. So it's, it's really a balancing act. And I mean, most people struggle with the, the problem of too much blood pressure. And that comes from our diet that's really high in sodium and salt. All right. Well, cholesterol. And there's a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Yeah, correct? LDL and HDL. Yes. So and the difference between those is the types of foods that you get them from, uh, LDL cholesterol, we're going to get from a lot of the, the dairy products, the animal derivatives. HDL we get from a lot of our whole grains and our fibers. So. Okay. And then finally, blood sugar. Blood sugar, pretty self-explanatory. It's that sugar we get, whether it's added or natural, and how it enters our bloodstream. The fiber helps to counteract that sugar, and it helps us to uh, keep that balanced blood sugar and keep us from spiking too high or too low. And we really want to, again, it's a balancing act with our blood sugar. We want to keep it pretty consistent throughout the day, like small waves. We don't want the tsunami followed by yeah, the, the, crash the crashing later. wave. That's where we get the, the meal that's really high in carbs a lot of time, followed by that afternoon lull where you feel like you're needing to take a nap after a big meal. That's because of the blood sugar spike and fall that you see with that. Those meals that are really out of whack from a macro, macronutrient standpoint. Okay, and there are a lot of students that probably think, well, if I'm not eating spoonfuls of sugar on mm -hmm. my cereal or something, I'm not getting sugar. But when they eat fruits, 
things Absolutely. like that. You're getting sugars just yeah. naturally Natural sugars. and a better type of sugar. Yes, and as fiber with to, it, which helps to kind of keep that sugar counteracted in your body and balance that blood sugar. Right. So same thing. I mean, the salt and the sugar, both of those crystals in those forms are not the best for you. No, especially <laughs> not in excess. Yes. Right. So let's take a look at So we go in, we do our numbers. And you have a five-week program, correct? Uh, yeah, five weeks of fitness and nutrition classes. Um, and it's seven weeks if you include the pre and the post health screening, where that's where we calculate those numbers we were just talking about. But with the five weeks of fitness and nutrition content in the middle, we have uh, me as the nutritionist teaching various subjects each week on nutrition. Um, and we have a fitness instructor who teaches fitness classes. So what you have up on the screen now is week one, and that is making small changes. So a lot of times we just want to get people starting to be aware of what they're eating, what they're consuming. A lot, there's a lot of mindless eating where mm -hmm. we kind of eat. Maybe we're watching TV. Maybe we're, we're working and multitasking. We want to make people aware of the things that they're eating and drinking that have calories in them. So the first week is all about thinking of a small change you can make in your life. Everybody's unique. Everybody has a different lifestyle and diet. We want to help people think about the things they're consuming and make at least one small change this week that we'll then go and talk about with them next week. Because I know a lot of people eat out of habit. Like you said, you Absolutely. just watch TV. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to eat while I do that. Yep. And I think if people look at food as fuel yep. instead of a reward, yeah. you know, like, oh, I did something good. I can go eat. Yeah, food as fuel or is, instead of a habit I mean? or like, instead of just something that I enjoy when I, maybe it's emotional eating. A lot of people eat when they're happy or right. sad yeah. or stressed. So you just have to kind of think about uh, stressed eating, emotional eating, tired eating, et cetera. All right, let's move on to week two. And we've got carbohydrates and the... Week uh, two is really breaking down each of the food groups and what you need to know about them. So when we think carbohydrates, uh, we don't want to think sugary cereal and candy. Those are the things we should avoid or soda. We want to think aiming for whole grains. So whether that be bread, rice, pasta, oatmeal, whole grains are important. As you scroll down, you see fats, dairy. Um, we have an H2O water section to... Um, tell us about how much hydration we need, at least 64 ounces of water a day, and look at some of the things like soda, tea, coffee, and alcohol, they're diuretics, so they actually counteract your hydration level. So we gotta think about how many of those we're consuming uh, for proper hydration, kidney function, and liver function. Let me throw something out there for you. Let's say somebody's drinking a soda, mm -hmm. and they've got a lot of ice in the soda, and they go, well, I'm consuming my water because of the ice. I'd say they're getting a little bit of water because of the there ice. There you go. That's, it's better than a soda with no ice, let's I say that. Yeah. So you to throw that one out You know, there. small changes, like we said. So maybe your, your first small change is having a soda with ice <laughs> but, instead of a soda trust without. Me, I do not hammer down <laughs> sodas with ice. I don't even drink. I mean, if I have a soda a month, it's a big thing. That's, I'm the same way. I feel exactly the same. All right. So let's uh, move. Now, do you think part of the reason why some people, because if they're making fast food less expensive, it's an easier alternative for people too, right? Absolutely. Because they're like, oh, I can afford that, so I'm gonna eat that. Yeah, that's true. So let's take a look, guys. I know a lot of people now, they start looking at food labels. They do. More yes. often than they did in the past. Because I remember when we were growing up, there was a food label, it was like, all right, well, why is that? It, it means nothing to us. Now, it seems like most everybody is looking at the food labels as they're shopping in the stores. Yeah, and I think even when I was a kid or even a teenager, I was looking at the food label being the front of the label. What's <laughs> on it? You got a cool cartoon? Yeah. Do you have a cool name? Does it look delicious? Because if so, I'm probably gonna grab it. Yeah, is there something I'm, inside? Or yeah, <laughs> yeah, Cracker Jacks. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm, I'm turning it around and, and comparing what's on the back of the label. So I like to look and, for example, between two types of peanut butter, I'll look and see which one has less added sugar and maybe I'll make that my decision. Right, and that's a big thing to look for is the added sugars because some are going to have sugars naturally yeah. in it. Yeah, we want to focus a little more on added sugar than natural. A lot of time natural sugar comes in conjunction with fiber, which helps counteract that sugar and how it's utilized in our body. Added sugar without fiber, that's really the culprit. And one thing I was reading about, I found this out on a different uh, site, but if you take the carbohydrates and the fiber and you take those two numbers and you divide them, if the number comes out to be five or less, it is a advantageous and worthwhile food to eat. Yes. So fiber, again, helps us to kind of utilize the carbohydrates in our body. You can also think of it as net carbs. So that would be the carbohydrates minus the fiber. We're always looking for our carbohydrates to be consumed in conjunction with fiber. So if it's low fiber, high carb, it's, it's not likely a healthy option. Right. Because then it would be a higher, like 
my mind is divide them and you want a number five or less. So yeah. if we're looking at net carbs, is there a number or a range that you want to look for? Uh, not so much. It's just more for kind of calculating out your carbohydrates with fiber and how the fiber sort of, you can think of it one for one, one fiber, one carb counteracting one another. Okay. So you think of it 30 grams of carbohydrates, five grams of fiber, and you can do minutes. that throughout the day. It doesn't yeah. have to be just in that one no. item. No, yeah, yeah, throughout the day. Because that's going to be a difficult thing to yes, do Yes, throughout the, the day it's good because the carbs do add up quite quickly. Right. All right, let's go on to week four. Week four is all about hidden veggies. So we have a couple of recipes there, some alternative recipes for people who may be picky vegetable eaters. Could be kids, could be adults. These are just some um, quick recipes that people can make. Spanish cauliflower rice, zucchini bread. Uh, they're delicious. You get a lot of vegetables and the veggie benefits associated with those. Um, it can get people kind of uh, excited about some recipes that involve vegetables for those not eating enough. Now the chocolate zucchini bread, because I've got a lot of zucchini still growing in my garden, and that would be an easy way because, I mean, I'm a big fan of chocolate also. Absolutely. Everybody is. That's, why that's, a, that's a popular one. <laughs> but without having to put, so we can take a look at the ingredients, right? And you've only got a half a cup of sugar, some yogurt, but it's cocoa powder that you're using. Is there a difference? Because I know that sometimes they say, well, eat a dark chocolate will be more beneficial for you than milk chocolate. Yeah, absolutely. The dark chocolate has the antioxidants that we're looking for that are uh, cancer fighters, blood sugar regulators, and they'd also have less added sugar. So milk chocolate kind of is stripped down, refined, and a lot of milk and sugar is added. So you're really taking away any benefit that you were getting from those antioxidants from the, the cacao berry, um, and the dark chocolate still has that. So we do want to focus on uh, chocolate that is lower in calories, uh, the higher dark chocolate percentages is what, we, what we're wanting. And we're basically tricking people by putting veggies in their food. Yeah, <laughs> I mean essentially, yeah, this is specifically, this lesson is for the person in that family who is not a big vegetable fan and will not touch a vegetable. But they'll eat them down when they don't know about it, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Still we got to get those benefits in somehow. All right, let's take a look at week number five right here and uh, the healthy eating plate. Yeah, absolutely. So that gives you kind of a breakdown of what uh, your meals should look like. At, at each meal, half your plate should be fruits and or vegetables, with vegetables being more than the fruits on that half. And then we want to look at our whole grains, our healthy lean proteins, uh, as well as adequate hydration from water. And when we're cooking with oils, we want to focus on olive oil. Uh, canola oil and vegetable oil are secondary in health, but the olive oil really has those uh, omega fats that are our healthy fats, so to speak, not unhealthy fats. So the olive oil, because there are people that just consume more olive oil just kind of like in its raw state just like yeah does have olive oil yeah like a, usually in the most common setting you'll see olive oil used to saute vegetables you might see olive oil used as the basis for an italian dressing so that's a couple different ways to integrate more into your diet and but, even like a dip for bread and absolutely things like that. yeah balsamic um, and olive oil right. as a dip for bread is a great option too um, but those all of that olive oil is the kind of fats that are good for our body healthy fats so to speak unsaturated fats all right. and that's well there's a lot of math behind all these numbers also there is. and there's when a you lot get done with the program you go in you check the numbers again Absolutely. And, and I'm sure if you follow it, you'll have greatly improved numbers. Yeah, look for our, uh, we have on our Kern Public Health webpage, we have the dates for our different programs. We go all around Kern County, different locations um, to run this Know Your Numbers program. So we hope to see some of you out there. Well, good. I'm glad you brought up the webpage and that stuff. And uh, it's certainly a, a wealth of information today. Yes, so absolutely. thank you for coming in and talking yeah, thank about you. that. All right. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, we're going to get Addie and get her back to work on some more expressions. So are you ready there, young lady? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Open up parentheses. All right. Negative 6S, and we'll do that for Scott. <laughs> Minus 8. Close parentheses. Plus 3. Open parentheses. I did that the wrong way. Oh, that, that's uh -oh. an E. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so open parentheses, 2S minus 5. Close parentheses. Now, are you going to be able to remember those are S's instead of sloppy fives? Or do you want to make it a different variable? Uh, I'll probably remember. Okay. You'll remember? remember? All right. There All you right. go. Here we go. What do we do first? Remember, before you add like terms like you did in the last one, we want to make sure that you get rid of the parentheses first. So how do you get rid of the first parentheses? Um, we do a plus one. Uh-huh. You do a plus one over there, sure. Plus one right there. 
or you don't have to. Either way, we find out with a plus one in the front, you can just drop mm -hmm. the parentheses, right? But I like yeah. how you're doing that because you still get to use the distributor property. Gotcha. Negative six S minus eight. What's next? Do a little. Plus. Tell us a little bit about what you're thinking there. Well, it's going to be a plus, but I, well, I'm not going to put the three because the three is part of the distributive property. Right. So what are you going to distribute? Um, so first I'm going to times three times two yeah. S. You're distributing the three. Good. So what's three times two S? Six S. Good. Nice job. And then what's next? Minus. And then um, you're going to go to the next number and do 3 times 5, which is 15. Gotcha. Now, how would you know it's a minus sign? Um, because um, this doesn't change it. Because if this was a negative 3, then it would change this negative 5 gotcha. into a positive. Yeah. And another way to look at it is you're multiplying positive 3 times negative 5. A positive times a negative is a negative. So I think we're saying the same thing, just in different words. And I like the different ways to look at the same situation. All right, what do you got next? Um, we're going to do alike terms like we did last time. Okay. Which things are alike in this problem? The S and the S. Yeah. We do the, um, the uh, alike terms again. But this one is a little bit different. It because is. this has a negative. Yeah. So we're going to put these two together. Okay. And a positive times a negative is a negative. So are we going to multiply them or add them? Add them. We're going to add them together, right? So we don't have to worry about multiplying. So it is 12, but it's going to be a... Okay, hold on. Think about this again. What is positive 6 minus 6? Oh, they, yeah, they you got to go a little too fast. Out. They do got to cancel each other out. That's right. So again, talking your way through this and kind of working the numbers in your head is great, but we also want to be able to write them down, think about what's happening there. So when you look at this number, make sure you're looking at the whole number and the sign, right? This is the number we're, look, we're adding together. So negative six plus six is what? It's zero. And, and the big question is, what happens to the S? Um, it is all gone. It goes away too, huh? Because yeah. this is like negative six snakes, and this is like positive six snakes and they all go away, right? The S yeah. is combined with the number and when they cancel out, the letters cancel out too. What are you going to combine next? Um, next, I'm going to combine the non-variable um, numbers. So they're okay. just going to have these two. And um, this is a negative 8. Yes. So um, it's a negative 8 and a negative 15, which means it's going to be a positive because they cancel each other out. We are going to, if you're multiplying them together, you will get a positive answer. I agree. Yes. But we are not multiplying them. We are adding. <laughs> we are adding them together. That's right. So what happens when you add a negative 8 and a negative 15 together? They, um, they come together and they actually minus and make it bigger. A bigger negative, if you can a say that negative. way, right? Yeah, that's right. So what is 15 plus 8? Um, 23. Yeah, and don't forget that sign in front. That's it. Nice job. I like how you did that one. Good job talking your way through it. I'm glad you were adding them, Addy, instead of multiplying them. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We're going to check in with Dr. Carlson and Mickey right now and see what else is going on. And welcome back here at Carlson Dentistry. We got done talking about what a patient uh, goes through when they come into the office the first time, x-rays, cleanings. But what happens if a patient comes in and on those x-rays you notice a cavity? So a cavity um, is caused by bacteria. So if you don't brush your teeth adequately, um, like the food you eat, the, the bacteria will eat off of that into your tooth and produce acids. So the acids is what erodes your tooth. When I look at a tooth, a tooth has the white part, which is the enamel, and that's the hardest part of your tooth. And the middle layer of your tooth is the dentin, um, and that's a softer layer of your tooth, and that protects the pulp chamber, which is the nerve and the blood vessels of your tooth. So when I look for a cavity, I make sure that it, on an x-ray that you'll see is the white part, this white layer. So that's the swimming. enamel. Correct. Okay. And then the lighter gray is the dentin of your tooth. And then this dark line here and here, and that's the nerve of the tooth. Okay. So that's where if someone says, I have pain, something's going on where it's reaching all the way yeah. to the nerve of the tooth. Usually. Gotcha. So we try to catch cavities when they, when they barely cross this light gray area. Usually if it's in the white part, we just watch it and make sure it's not growing every year. But once it gets to this light gray area, that's when we start to do fillings. 
And so when you're looking at this x-ray, you can see this white box here, here, and here. Those are silver fillings that were usually done way back when. They still are, are used today. But nowadays we use a, a material called composite. So more of a polymer, like a plastic that Correct. hardens. And it's your oh. tooth color, so you don't really see it. Right, so, okay, so the days of seeing all silver teeth or silver in someone's teeth mm -hmm. are, are fading away. Fading away, yeah. And so when I look at these x-rays, I look obviously at your natural tooth to make sure you don't have any cavities, but I also look at the old fillings that you have. So in this picture, I'm looking at the silver filling and looking underneath to see if there's any darkness. So on this one, I actually do see a little cavity developing. You can see this dark line kind of creeping up underneath. And that usually is a sign of leakage, which a filling can fail if a cavity starts underneath it and can get underneath and kind of creep under there. Now, Does that make sense? Ab absolutely, yes. Yeah. So when I hear the word cavity, I think of a hole. Is that essentially what a cavity is? Is a hole in the tooth? Is it, Correct. Does it compromise the integrity of the tooth? Or is it an area where uh, things are simply going to seep deeper into the tooth and cause more harm? I mean, anytime you have a cavity, it does compromise the tooth because part of that tooth has eroded away. Our job as a dentist is to make sure that's not spreading. So we go in there with our hand pieces and remove that decay and then we seal it off with a composite, okay? And that's to seal the borders, that way it doesn't keep growing. People don't realize what goes into, you know, people say filling a cavity, but yeah. if we could just see the process here, For sure. um, using the model again, so. So we'll this, is, this is the composite that we use. Okay. So I'm gonna use this model as an example. So this is, a, we call this a composite gun. So composite, that we express in your tooth comes out kind of like a blob, okay? Got it. And then we can use our instruments to kind of push it where we want it and kind of shape the grooves like your other side of the, like all your other teeth. And then once we have it where we want it, we use an ultraviolet blue light, kind of like this. And after 20 seconds or so, it'll I harden. I should have stopped staring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was so interesting. <laughs> and then now it's hard as a rock, okay? Wow. So, so that's then, pretty neat. Do you guys have to create a texture? I think, you know, people might recognize when they're repatching concrete, they would have to roughen the surface underneath to create more area for it to adhere. Do you guys have to do the same thing with the cavity, kind of make sure the surface underneath is ready to bond Correct. with that polymer? Yeah, so we make sure all the, the margins, we call it, that's where the, the composite meets the tooth is all smooth. And then we actually use a bonding system where we clean out the, the prep or your tooth uh, before we place it. It's kind of like an antibacterial. And then after that, we place a bond, which is like a thin liquid layer on the tooth. And that's what actually holds the composite into place, actually bonds to your tooth. Versus the silver fillings back in the day that they used to use, they never really bonded, they were locked in mechanically. Okay, so physically attaching it, not adhering it. Correct. Wow, sounds like dentistry has come a long way yep. in the last 100 years where it's more of making it look like a tooth, and uh, but also at the same time, make sure that patient has a healthy and happy smile. Yep. Well, I appreciate it. Learn it all about cavities when we come back. Braces and dentures, what are they? How do they work? All right, thanks for that, Mickey, as well as Dr. Carlson. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Scott's in studio. Addie, an eighth grade student, is in studio as well with a big smile right there. There you go. <laughs> and uh, you know what's coming up? Current Math Week. So there it is right there. So we'll talk a little bit about that. That's coming up October 23rd through the 27th. And we were celebrating Kern Math Week last year. We had some folks from Mind Research in studio with us. And we will again this year as we get a little bit closer to it. But this is something where it's family time centered around math activities, math stories, math games, to do things as a family during that week and kind of just, if you don't normally do it, get in a habit of doing things like that. So Addie, do you uh, ever do things with your family where they're kind of math oriented? It's not like, hey, sit down, we're going to do math activity right now, but do you guys do any activities or games or things that you can think of that kind of incorporate math at all a little bit? Um, sometimes we will play dice games okay. that require math, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And do you ever go shopping with your parents or family? Yes. Okay, and do you help with kind of like figuring out prices or quantities of things and stuff yes. like that? See, and things like that also count as family math time, even though you don't have a book out or a 
game board or something like that. So that is coming up October 23rd through the 27th. All right, you've been working on expressions. And the next thing that comes up, Addy, is going to be working with equations. So we're going to give you an equation right now. Right. Here we go. Zero equals five, open parentheses, six minus x, close parentheses, plus seven x. And I will give you two minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> go. <laughs> okay, what are we going to okay. do first, Addy? So the first thing... Um, we're going to do is distributive property. You again. like that one because you're really good at it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. So um, I will bring down the zero equals. Yeah. That was a wonky zero. So nothing um, is happening on the left hand side. Go ahead. Yeah. So first we're going to do five times six, which is 30. Yeah. And then we're going to bring down, we're going to first do this, and uh -huh. it's going to be five times negative x. Right. So um, it's going to be negative 5x. Good job. Good job. Well done. I like how you explain that. And then we'll bring down everything else. Yeah, nothing happened to the 7x either. Good. Yeah. So far, so good. What's next? The next thing we're going to do um, is we could combine like terms, but we could also do the plus. Let's um, combine them first because we're okay. really good at that part, right? You did that in the last couple problems. Let's do that here too. Okay, so how are we going to combine them? Because we're adding. We are adding, um, yeah. <laughs> we're going to, if you were to move these, or if you were to switch them like this. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So what you've done is you just moved those two things around, but I like how you kept the sign with it. It's still a negative, right? A negative for the 5, and it's still a positive for the 7. Good for you. So over here, then it would basically be like subtracting. Mm -hmm. That's right. From there. Yep. So it would be a two. It would be two x. Mm -hmm. Seven x minus five x. Good. What about the thirty? So the thirty, we would bring this down. Yeah. Go ahead and bring it down. Now tell me, with the two x, is the two x a positive or a negative? It's a positive. It is. That's right. What about the other side? We'll just do this. Now, here's where we get to a different part of the problem we didn't have before. This is no longer an expression. This part's an expression, but we this have an overall problem that is called an equation. An equation because that has an equals sign. So, at the end of the problem, the goal is to get x equals a number, right? So, we've got to figure out what that is. What are we going to do to figure that out? Okay. So, um, to get rid of this two over here, uh -huh. well, just to keep this here, um, we're going to have to get rid of the 30 okay. just to get the x. Let's move so. And Addy, before you get rid of the 30, this is going to be the anticipatory moment right here <laughs> because we're going to see what you do, but we're going to check in with Mickey and Dr. Carlson, check out the dentures, and we'll see what Addy comes up with right after this. And hey everybody, still here at Carlson Dentistry, here with Dr. Carlson. And we've talked about how your teeth get cleaned, what you look for, the process behind it. If someone has an issue, such as a cavity, what can you do to rectify it, help them continue a healthy and happy smile. But on the other end, what if someone doesn't have cavities? What if it's an alignment issue, or people think of braces, Invisalign? Yeah, especially with younger kids, we really try to intercept if they're gonna have some developmental challenges. Um, Obviously crowding is a huge indicator that they're going to need braces later on because baby teeth are naturally smaller than our adult teeth. So if there's already crowding with baby teeth, they're most likely going to have severe crowding as an adult. I'm not an orthodontist, I am a general dentist, but I look for those periods in their life where they're younger and we can intercept and help expand their growth. And so what we'll do is work with an orthodontist. Um, if they have a lot of crowding and they can use palatal expanders which is kind of opens up your maxilla this is your top of your mouth so when i had braces as a kid that device they put up and my parents would have to like use the key and crank it like a quarter of a millimeter every night to mm -hmm. expand my jaw slowly yeah okay and so while you're developing in those prime years that helps you develop uh, your jaws get wider and that helps increase the space for your teeth okay so then i know braces i mean that's what i had as a kid 10 11 years old uh, but then in an adult, I stopped wearing my retainer at a young age and realized I had some crowding starting to happen again. Even though I had a permanent retainer, there was still some movement. Mm -hmm. 
And when we came in and talked, you told me I didn't need braces necessarily. There was a new option called Invisalign. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Invisalign? Because I think a lot of people might think, oh, Invisalign, you know, it, does it actually make movement or how does that work? Yeah, Invisalign's a great product. There's a lot of different brands other than Invisalign. Really, it's just clear retainers. And so what we do is take a scan of your mouth and that helps us look at your mouth and look at what needs to be done. And we plug it into the computer and we actually print out clear retainers. So it's a series of stages. You, you wear them for two weeks at a time, depending on what you need, slight rotations or some minor crowding. Um, it's easily fixed with Invisalign. And so you wear it for two weeks at a time. You get a new set of retainer every two weeks until you're done. Okay. And then how do they, I mean, move the teeth? Because I'm thinking braces, everyone knows they're literally glued to your teeth. And then as they put different bands in it, it shapes them and moves them depending on what they want. How do these make your teeth move? With Invisalign, they kind of just, they can do a little bit of rotation and expand and procline and incline and whatnot. Uh, we also use little buttons on your teeth, which is composite, which we talked about earlier. Um, these act as little attachments to kind of help torque in certain ways. Um, you don't see them, they, they completely blend in with your teeth, but they actually help these retainers click into place. Okay. Makes sense. So is that the same composite used for cavities? Correct, same so material. Multi, okay, so it sounds like dentistry is saying, we, we don't need five different things here. We can use the composite to fill a hole, fill a cavity, or even attach retainers. Correct, yeah. Crazy, and I'm glad my teeth are looking great. Appreciate the help Perfect. on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now let's get into, how does someone become a dentist? What does it take, what do you do? Obviously four years of high school, and then an undergrad and at college, you can kind of study whatever you want. Um, I went the science background. You just have to meet the, the requirements for each school. Everyone's dip kind of different. Um, so f four years of undergrad and then four years of dental school, actually. Four years of dental school. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So where did you go or where, what are places that people can go? I think there's 55 schools in the country. Okay, so it's really selective. You got to know selective. where you want to go. Yeah. Um, I obviously didn't apply to all of them. Most people don't. <laughs> Um, I went to Creighton, which is in Omaha, Nebraska. It's a little small private school there, um, and I loved it. But there, I think there's six schools in California that you can go to, a couple in L.A., San Francisco. and. Well, on behalf of Do The Math, we want to thank you, giving you your own. Thank you for helping us do the math. A lot of people don't realize all the math that goes into being a dentist or working on people's teeth and allowing them to have that happy and healthy smile. So on behalf of Do The Math, thank you for having us out, Dr. Carlson. Thanks for coming. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Well, a big thanks to Dr. Carlson taking us through that series, as well as Mickey for volunteering to uh, have his mouth looked at and worked on a little bit right there. <laughs> All right, Addie, what did you guys do? So we ended right here. Um, and to get rid of this 30, we subtracted it from the equation, but that means we also had to do it on the other side, right. which is where this line comes in. And then we eventually got to negative 30 down here, and we rewrote it over here. And to get rid of this two, so it's just x, we did divi divided by two. That's right. And um, to go back, and then we did, like if we had a line right here, then mm -hmm. we did it on the other side. And um, I like it. Looks good like idea. you ended at negative 15, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, we good. Ended at Addie, did you have some fun today? I did. All right, excellent. We're glad you were here. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.